Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are down here with Primrose and Bluebell and Devon and Pine and Sunflower for a very, very special day down here at the Temperate Forest Zone. And I have done so much work over here. I cannot wait to show you guys what progress has been done on the White Tail Deer exhibit. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you really, like, really quickly. Look at this, look at this. I decided to bring the girls out. They're having a little picnic down here. They have their cake because the maids love, love, love sugary things and sweet things. There's a couple sandwiches over here for me to eat in case I get a little bit hungry. We have our little picnic basket, our little blanket, and Pine and Devin have come out to sit by them and keep the maids company and keep them safe while I am busy running around doing work over here. Oh, I thought there was a puppy over here. Is there a puppy over there? Oh, I saw Redwood run by. Oh, I love being able to turn around and just see all of the wolves and oh my goodness, look at how overgrown all of the habitat is becoming. Ah, oh, I'm gonna have to get in there and clear out all of those berries and all of those vegetables pretty soon, but that'll be good. That'll help us to make some, uh, make some vegetable bait later. But yeah, so let me show off the new exhibit to you guys. Look at this, look at this fantastic thing. I mean, look at it, isn't it beautiful? We have got the glorious little waterfall in the background there. We've got a little island I left in the middle of the lake so that we can kind of add uh, some trees into the center. We put a whole bunch of oak leaves up against the back, but they're carefully stacked so that hopefully the deer won't be able to climb up them and get out. I might add a few more oak leaves to the top there. We still need to close up the gap between the ranger area and the deer exhibit, but what I did is I went ahead and I lined the entire exhibit, except over there where there's like a little hill for them, with a sloped carpenter's slope and put some grass blocks on it so that that way it is a chew deep exhibit, a nice little um, kind of like a nice little drop-in indented exhibit. Looks really nice for the white-tailed deer. I'm so excited! It'll give them lots of space and it'll give us a great view of the deer because that's our problem. Hey Redwood! What's up buddy? Oh yay! More poo to scoop! Thank you so much! Gotta keep your exhibit clean! Let's see, what do you want over here, huh? some wild mint and a health syringe and you want your ice and leather to chew on and soapy water to get you all clean so we can work on that later oh he's already gone oh is that a puppy oh we just saw one of the puppies come out of the den that's so exciting they're really feeling oh there's maple i saw her just for a second but they're really feeling a lot more confident at being able to come out of their den. I bet they're going to start hunting with their parents pretty soon. That'll be- <gasps> Look at Spruce! Oh, look at him go! He is just- Oh, Spruce, are you okay, buddy? He's like, whoa! Mushroom! Mushroom! Oh dear, he's learning how to be a puppy. He's learning how to be a wolf pup. Well, I'm not too worried. He will figure out- See, there he goes. There he goes. He managed it that time. Like watching a toddler learn to climb. But yeah, so this is going to be our white-tailed deer exhibit right across the way from the wolf exhibit. I'm trying to figure out if there might be some sort of, like, change we could do to the wolf exhibit to make it easier to see the wolves. But at the same time, they're predators. They're not really meant to be on display. So, I mean, maybe if we put something up here, like a little gazebo that you can watch them. Maybe clear out a couple more of the trees. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like seeing a red wolf should be, like a reward. Like there, we just saw one come out of the den again. There, Meadow, Meadow! It should be a reward for the hard effort of coming down. Hi, Meadow! Of coming down and actually looking for the wolves. So that's why I'm okay without being able to see them immediately really clearly because you guys, you should come over and you should have to like look for the wolves. The wolves shouldn't just be on display for you. Plus, they love their big exhibit. And speaking of big exhibits, even though it doesn't look that big, this exhibit's huge! I cleared out tons of trees and tons of dirt. I actually have, like, overflowing amounts of dirt. It feels like, I felt like so much more dirt than it actually is. But I gathered up tons and tons of dirt so that we have plenty of room, um, plenty of dirt to sort through for things later. And I love this! I love this exhibit! And look at the little details! Oh! These are little mushrooms and they're also lights! So I'm trying to come up with all of these creative little ways that we can light up the zoo and keep the zombies at bay without putting anyone at risk. And these are, these are some of the ideas. So I made a little divincing tree stump and it actually has 
has some glowstone inside of it. So at night it will serve as a light. And then we have some little mushrooms, which will do the same thing. They have, they're have they made out of clay, little clay pieces, but they also serve as a light because under the little mushroom cap, there's a piece of glowstone. So these are little cute ways that we're gonna try to light up the temperate forest area. And we'll use like different kinds of little light sources. Like we use the paper lanterns over by where the uh, tigers are. We'll use different light sources in addition to the torches all over the place just to make everything look really nice, look really cool. I absolutely love it. Sunflowers here in case we need to run and grab our deer from the, um, from our cryogenics lab. If we need to go by the cryogenics lab or get any supplies, I brought Sunflower with us so I can grab her really quickly. Oh, look at everybody. I just, I love seeing everyone here on a little picnic. Are you guys all comfy? You're not a red wolf educator. One, two, three, four, but they could be, they could be if they wanted, they're really cute. All right, but yeah, I'll come in and I will show you guys what's going on. We do have one block right here that I don't think the deer will figure out how to jump over the gate, but we do have one block right there to let us get in and out. And then I added lots and lots of little carpenter's blocks so that we could give them some nice, nice looking rocks, nice area. I really like how the waterfall turned out actually, really nice. And yeah, there's lots of space over here for them to climb. See, once you get in here, it's a lot bigger than it looks. The little fawns can climb over here if they want. There's some space back here. They can climb down into their waterfall. They can come over here, but the fence, the fencing is still here. The birchwood fencing is still here to keep them in. So I don't think they'll escape. I've actually never had problems with deer escaping which has been a very good thing. In real life, the white-tailed deer can actually climb, um, like can, can jump straight over fences that are like six foot tall. So you can have like six, eight foot tall fence and a white-tailed deer is just gonna leap right over it. So they're really very agile in real life, but I think that will be okay with our white-tailed deer. They're gonna be well fed, and well taken care of in here. So I don't think they're gonna be super eager to like jump away and zip off on us. All right, but oh, and then the other side, let me come over here. All right, hang on guys, I'll, go, I'll be over for lunch later if I get hungry. The other side is this side where we're working on a little zookeeper project, our little um, park ranger area where we've got our, there we go, our animal traps hard at work. And oh, look at that, chicken and a pork chop. Yes, we always need the pork chop to make more pork sausage for our wonderful wolves. So we need to close this area up with some more of these logs. So we're gonna be growing some more of those logs in just a little bit. I need to get some saplings and then we have plenty of poo. And this is the little gate that we're gonna use to get in and out. So we've got plenty of poo and I also need a set of shears. Where's my shears? I know I have some shears somewhere. There they are. So we're gonna grab these shears and we will make some more bait to bait the traps with today because we need to make sure that our animals stay fed. Once we take responsibility for our animals in this zoo, then we need to make sure that they have plenty of food and that means keeping these two animal traps that constantly bring in fresh supplies of uh, like new animal meat, keeping them constantly going. Oh good, there's a little bit of leather there. Let's see, let's come over here. I'm gonna gather up the bones for bone meal just in case I need it soon. Yeah, and we're totally out of veggie bait actually. So we'll go back and we'll collect the veggies from the wolf exhibit in just a little bit. You can see more of the cute little light mushrooms and the cute little light lamp. Oh, and there's a snail. I love snails. Oh my goodness. Oh, where's the safari net? Where's the safari net? I wanna, I wanna, come here little snail. Come here, little guy. Aren't you so cute? What am I gonna do with you? What am I gonna do with a cute little snail? I wanna keep him for like ever and ever and ever. I bet he won't stay forever, but I'm gonna put him back here and then we'll just try to keep track of where our snail goes. So that makes me happy. All right, let's see if we've got any oak logs that we can, or oak, yeah, good. We have an oak sapling. Oh, we've got a lot of oak saplings. Yeah, we'll be fine with this. But let's take it out and I'm gonna need a bit of a clear area. Here we go, something more like over here. And we'll put the little oak sapling down and try growing it with the wolf poo. Look at that, it worked. <laughs> so wolf poo makes good fertilizer, noted. And then we just go ahead, we've collected some of the pieces, the oak wood post that we need. And oh yeah, we've already got more saplings, there we go. And let's get a couple more posts. Man, that works really well on trees. Apparently the uh, the wolf fertilizer works very, very well when it comes to trees, noted. Yeah, look at that, every time. All right, and then gather this up. 
There we go. That should be enough planks already. Or posts, I should say. Oh, I love how this is coming along. And oh man. Oh no, it's raining. Oh, ladies, hang on. Oh no, I didn't I didn't think about what would happen if it started raining on our, our little picnic. Hang on, ladies. Here, I'll put you under the gazebo. How about that? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that it's raining on our picnic. Hang on. I'm going to move you guys out of the rain. Is the gazebo safe? Is it free from rain? It is free from rain. Well, you know what? This is a great place to have a little picnic, too. There you go, ladies. Hang on. I'll move the dogs over so that you guys will still have your little protection. All right, Devin, Pine, I'm going to get you guys out of the rain, too. I guess it's too late for the cake, the rest of the picnic. All right, stay over here. All right, you guys, stay over here. You guys should be just fine. It's actually very pretty over here. I love how Blue Bluebell and Primrose just, like, have each other to talk to now. Uh, and I still don't have a hat to keep the rain off me, but that's okay. Such is the life of being a zookeeper. Being out in all weather, all weather elements. Um, and then, actually, the other saplings I need to put down inside of the exhibit to decorate the exhibit with. So, that's okay. And Sunflower, are you all right out here? Yeah, you're okay? All right, good. All right, she should be all right. I bet she's not going to be too too hurt by the rain. She's a very large bird. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and wood post. Wood post. There we go. That should be enough that we shouldn't have any deer sneak through here. And there we go. Look at that. Not bad. Not bad. Where'd my snail go? Oh, he's a speedy little speedy guy. Look at him. Oh, oh, oh. Is that him? Nope. Well, I don't know where he went, but my little snail is somewhere around here. And actually, if we have some time later, I want to try to work on getting this room sort of spruced up a little bit so that we've got maybe, you know, maybe some walls. Maybe I don't have to worry about gravel and dirt falling down into my mouth as I'm trying to take a nap over here. So we might work on that in a little bit. And I also want to bring over that other chest into the into the little ranger station so that we can make this a little nicer if we had guests coming over i'd be so embarrassed if they were like oh the first thing i see before the beautiful gazebo you spent days and days working on or or the red wolf exhibit or even the, the white-tailed deer exhibit is that you've got this this junk pile sitting here and that's just not that's not gonna do we can't have that but all right let's go ahead and we do need to start decking out some plants in here for the white-tailed deer and I was actually reading up more on white-tailed deer the white-tailed deer is a medium species of deer that is basically everywhere like if you live in America you've probably seen a white-tailed deer before yay tree is it as big as we want though oh there's a slime in here <gasps> no my snail why <gasps> this was probably my little snail he was a little speed demon right into the little lake and then now he's a little slime ball and that's really sad i love snails i don't know why i just really love snails and now he's gone just like that already oh that's so sad and that tree's too small i deem you too small tree you're too small to hold my grief so we're gonna go ahead and try again i want to see if i can get a big tree that is an even smaller tree. I am, this is, is my grief not big enough for this snail so that you can at least be a big tree? All right, do we have like some stone or something I can put down? Some ores. I don't think that would work the same. Um, let me see. Ah, stone, yes. We do have some stone. So let's see if we can do the tree trick where we go like one, two, three, four, five. Man, I haven't done this in forever. Ouch. I thought I had... Oh, I'm gonna have to put feather falling on these booties. All right, and then come on. Oh man, really? That's not fair. It'll probably work. Well, I guess it is fair. I'm sorry, little sapling. I'm kind of demanding a lot of you. All right, come on. Um, no, that's wrong. You're supposed to do the tree trick where you grow like super tall, not grow pedunky. Dang it. All right, let's see if this works. Dang it. Oh man. Sunflower, we might have to fly up for bone mill. I'm sorry, darling. It appears I have overestimated... Oh, and it's so much rain. Dang. It appears I have overestimated how effective... <laughs> how effective that was going to be. My poor little snail. How did he even get over there? I bet that was him. There's no other, there's no other explanation. That was my poor snail. Oh, I've got like one bone to try to turn into... All right, we're going to try this one more time. Poor little tree. All right, we're going to get over here and jump. All right, come on, tree. You can do it. 
Dang it! All right, I'm gonna have to get I'm gonna have to get um more bone meal with sunflower really quickly. But we could get the white-tailed deer while we're at it, because I do need to put in more trees. Ah, uh, I need to just carry tons of bone meal on me. Oh, and let's go ahead and eat some of this sandwich, even though it's a little soggy. We can put up with the soggy sandwich, sunflower. All right, hang on, ladies. I'll be right back. Woo, woo. Hang on, sunflower. We can do this. Oh, I know it's hard to fly in the rain. I know it's hard to fly in the rain. And there we go. All right, I'll be right back, darling. All right, so let's see. We're going to go downstairs. Oh, well, I'm going to come over here first and get large amounts of bone meal. There's some bone meal, but I know I have giant piles of bone meal. Take this. Oh, I can only pick up, like, one right now. All right, let's put all this wood away. That'll help. Um, Tate's backpack. I'm going to throw this in here. And dash of dyes. And... Man, if ever you need bone meal, going into the nether and grabbing, like, the giant piles of it is a pretty good way to go. Because we've got giant bones in the nether. But come in, friend, I'm sure you could explain what creatures once upon lived in the nether that left behind... Yeah, he's like, the nether? Well, that is my, my home. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later, Pikmin friend. Alright, gotta come down here. I know Bella and Iverson are still hard at work over in their labs. So we're gonna come over. And where are... Oh, I thought we had like five. I forgot we had two, four, six, eight, ten deer. I totally forgot that we had ten deer that Mara has gifted to us. So that's going to take a little while. <laughs> that's going to take a little while to like sort through ten deer. So let's make a little bit of room, my poor snail. And let's see. Um, I mean, it would be a good thing to have the deer with us. Oh, geez, Professor Cowplant the Third. Don't worry, I am actually escorting some of these guys out of here and then I actually need to okay and we're gonna leave behind the big cats let's not mix this up so I suddenly release a tiger into the deer exhibit I think that would be a little bit of the wrong kind of excitement for the day if you ask me <laughs> just a little bit all right and there's a big cat so that needs to that needs to stay and there's a deer and a deer and a deer and another deer and look at this, it's more deer. Oh my goodness. And we're going to leave behind the sand cats as well. And we'll have to do their exhibit in the future. Because I know you guys are super excited about the sand cat exhibit. Alright, there we go. Alrighty. Hello, Experiment 626. Alright, and back up. And now I've got the bone meal. And now I've got the deer. So there's some improvements. Oh, I feel so bad about the picnic. I feel so bad about the picnic for Primrose. I, I was so excited to have Primrose and Bluebell get to come out and spend some time just picnicking. And, and look what happened. Look what happened. Rain. It's raining on their parade, but it shows me how important it is to build like little cabin info areas and to build up um, like little gazebos and pagodas and things like that for our guests to rest under. Come on, tree. You're going to do this. I know you can. It did it! I'm gonna have to live with it. It's not the best tree. I have I have words about like the scope of the tree and the fact that it took almost an entire stack of bone meal to be able to grow. But it's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible. I will bestow upon this tree the fragrant fern that I am holding on to. So this tree can have the little fragrant fern. Alright, there you go. Maybe I'll maybe I'll make a little branch on it, add some add some bird nests, see if we can encourage some of the temperate birds to live over here. Um, but yeah, we'll try that out in the future. But I have learned some interesting things about deer. Other than the fact that they can jump so super duper high, I also learned today that the white-tailed deer actually has a very small range. They usually spend their lives living in the same. That's that's a decent tree. I don't know why all of my trees are being pedunky. There should be huge trees with lots and lots of branches. Oh, that's more like it! Thank you! Thank you! You have restored my faith in growing trees. Oh, I'm happy now. Um, and we'll grow maybe just a couple more. But yeah, the white-tailed deer will actually live most of its life in the same one square mile area. And I didn't know that. I thought they would be like, you know, migratory and roaming across the Great Plains and things like that. No, they live in the same square mile for most of their entire lives. And actually, the females will, they're very solitary uh, as females, but their babies will stick with them. And even their babies from the previous year will stick around even after they had new babies. And then the 
the uh, males actually all hang out together, which makes so much sense. Because my family used to always see uh, male white-tailed deer kind of clustered together during the year. And we thought that was interesting. We knew they were brothers because we had seen them as fawns. And we knew they were specifically like the same white-tailed deer because one only had three legs. It was just born with only three legs. But he got along just fine. He just, he just hopped around and followed his brothers around and they would stay together like all the time. And it turns out that's what male white-tailed deer do is that they will travel around in groups, but they will split up during the mating season. But otherwise they hang out in a big group. And the females you can often see with um, other deer because they keep their babies with them. So I thought that was really fun. I was very excited to learn all of those things about deer today because you see deer everywhere. And I don't know, I guess you just kind of take them for granted a little bit that they have pretty interesting, slightly complex little lives. Oh, yay, the boxwood propagated for me. Wonderful. Wow. I thought I had enough boxwood. I did not have enough boxwood. But there we go, you guys. So we have managed to get... Um, a lot of water down our shirt because it's raining so much and a tiny tree on the island I wish I wish you'd grown on the island beautiful thing but we managed to get that gr done and we managed to put down a few little boxwoods and I got the girls out of the rain at least they're probably gonna have a lot to say about having had it rain so much on them and we've got a really nice exhibit starting over here i think we're going to be able to see the white-tailed deer very easily and take care of them very easily so i'm pretty excited sunflower let's see so next time we'll have to go around and collect up maybe we'll just oh i know what we can do sunflower i need to start clearing away the plants from this area anyway so we can start expanding more so we'll just kind of start clearing away the plants up towards that area kind of mark off maybe a few of the future exhibits and decorating all of those plants over here and i can tell you about the fascinating diets of the white-tailed deer which is actually much more interesting than it sounds next time but for now sunflower why don't you and i let's, let's go over and we're gonna get out of the rain and hang out with the girls on the gazebo until the sun comes back oh my goodness oh this beautiful beautiful wisteria gazebo oh this is much better much better but all right guys um sunflowers there room for you there you go sweetie and i will see you guys later Bye bye